What I'm going to do today is show you how to measure quadriceps alignment, uh, quadriceps tendon alignment on a CT scan. Uh, these, this is done usually using preoperative CT scans, for the, in this case for a total knee replacement. Uh, this case is using the MAKO protocol. What you really need is to have axial slices through the knee extending between 15 to 20 centimetres, depending on the height of the patient, proximal to the knee joint line. Now most preoperative CT protocols do this. Uh, this case has 0.5 millimetre slices. That's not actually necessary. You can get by with the standard 1.25 millimetre slices, as long as you go proximally enough, which, which as I say, most cases you do. For this demonstration, I'm using the IntelliViewer software program, uh, though all standard viewing programs can perform these same measurements. So you'll see here across the top, this in the menu bar, I've got um, some things I'm going to use today. One of them is this here, which is the rotation tool. And then we've got the um, cob angle measurement and the circle, circular uh, measurement tool. Um, so to get started, the first thing you need to do is you need to find a, a slice that shows the posterior condyles clearly, uh, and then draw, then uh, assess this posterior condyle line. And what I'm going to do is the first case is I'm going to use this rotate angle tool, and I'm going to put the posterior condyle line horizontal on the screen and you can put it about there. You can check this by zooming in a bit if you need to to make sure that that's horizontal to the bottom of the screen, which it almost is. And then what that means now is that we can now measure our, all our angles relative to the horizontal of the screen. It just makes things easier. The alternative is that you can, different software can allow you to measure directly against the posterior condyles, or you can measure the angle between the posterior condyles and the horizontal, and then it subtract that from the angle we're about to measure but this seems to be the easiest way. Now if you look at this patient, they have some uh, patellofemoral osteoarthritis, some lateral patella osteophytes, but not dramatic lateral patella tracking. Obviously on, this is not a flexed uh, view, but um, it's not severe lateral patella osteoarthritis. As you go approximately, you'll see here that the quads tendon becomes quite indistinct above the patella. And what we're looking for is, as you go more proximally, you'll start to, do, you'll start to find uh, the VMO and the vastus lateralis, which start to come into the screen about now. And you can see here that about this point here, you can start to see laminations, which, or the fat pad between the laminations of the quads tendon, which is what I've sort of marked out a bit there. That's the first indication that you're getting up to the proximal end of the quads tendon. And the next thing is you go more proximal, you'll start to see quite clearly the VMO on this side, and it, it, it narrows down towards the quads tendon and the vastus lateralis on the lateral side. This is clearly a left knee. So you'll find those and that gives you some indication as well where the quads tendon is going to be. Then as you go more proximal, you will see often more clearly this fat stripe between the laminations here. You often have to go through several slices to find the spot that is most uh, makes it most clear. And as you go more proximal, it becomes, it changes again. As you'll see, you go up here, now you're getting this oval structure coming in. And this oval structure, which I've noted there, is the bottom or distal end of the rectus femoris muscle valley. And that becomes quite a clear oval here. And if you can't find the laminations between in the quads tendon, then go more proximal, find the rectus femoris, and then come back down the, until that, disappears and then you'll find the top end of the quads tendon which is normally relatively um, distinct. It does take a little bit of work to get this regularly. I'm just going to mark it out here roughly to, so we've got some idea where it is. But that's going to be the top end, proximal end of your quads tendon. And we want to measure that now to the centre of the femoral shaft. The way to do that is to then go to the circular measurement tool and find the centre of the femoral shaft. And that we can, we can make a mark on the lateral edge here. Bring the uh, oval across till we find the most medial edge. And bring it, muck around with it till you're happy. That's giving you the best approximation of the centre of the femoral shaft. And then you go to your angle measurement tool. In case I tend to use the Cobb angle measurement tool. Again, find the centre of this quads tendon, which I will say is about there and then draw an angle down to the center of the femoral shaft. And then we now want to measure relative to the posterior condyles, and we know that's horizontal. So we're now going to make a line which is 
perpendicular to the horizontal. You can see I'm lining it up with the top of the screen there. And that then allows you to measure, we'll bring it down to the middle here so that we, so it looks nice. You can, that then shows you, and you can just see it on the edge here, that measure is measuring down the bottom left hand corner here, 21.8 degrees. So this patient has a quads tendon axial angle of 21.8 degrees. This is a mildly increased quads tendon axial angle, or mildly lateralized quads tendon. Um, the normal value is about two degrees lateralized, and it ranges very widely. It can range from about 40 or 50 degrees medialized, so way over here, uh, through to about 50 or 60 degrees lateralized, so somewhere way over here. It's been clearly shown to be associated with the development of lateral facet patellofemoral osteoarthritis. We've also shown that it's associated with poorer outcomes after total knee replacement, and that if you alter the femoral component rotation, you can uh, avoid those poorer outcomes. This patient with mild quads uh, tendon um, lateralization would probably benefit from two and a half to three degrees of external rotation of the femoral component, for example. Um, so I hope that's been helpful in showing you how to measure this. Uh, we've got more work and more videos should be coming up in the near future. Thank you very much.